those who have applied or hoping to apply for a green card in future should be ready for future delays in the processing. We have been seeing the continuous retrogression in visa bulletin reports. Visit us at certain feature and other questions to see how best we can help you out your process. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Now let's continue to watch the video and find out what's new in U.S. immigration. U.S. employers seeking to sponsor foreign nationals for permanent residency through the employment-based green card slash immigrant visa process received unwelcome news in the U.S. Department of State's visa bulletin for May 2023 which was recently published. Due to increased demand for employment-based immigrant visas, retrogression of visa availability has created artificial backlogs in a number of employment-based immigrant visa categories. As context, the Visa Bulletin, which is issued monthly by the Department of State, provides an overview of visa availability in the various family-based and employment-based immigrant visa categories. In each of these categories, the Visa Bulletin indicates whether visas are current, or currently available, i.e. there is no backlog, or whether a cutoff date has been imposed to limit visa issuance within the annual limits. The Immigration and Nationality Act sets limits on the number of immigrant visas that may be issued to foreign nationals each year in the various immigrant visa preference categories. If the demand for immigrant visas is greater than the supply of visas for a particular category, the Department of State will set a cutoff date in that category in order to limit the number of individuals eligible to immediately claim an immigrant visa, and thus attempting to keep the allocation of visas within the annual limits. Only individuals with a priority date earlier than the cutoff date listed are eligible to apply for slash be issued an immigrant visa. An individual's priority date corresponds to the date on which the first official filing towards the green card process was submitted to the relevant government agency, in the employment-based context, either the PERM Labor Certification Application to the Department of Labor, or the I-140 Immigrant Visa Petition to U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services for those categories slash classifications that are exempt from the labor certification requirement. For family-based cases, a priority date is established by the receipt date for the I-130 petition. In some categories and for some nationalities, retrogression has been the norm. For example, Chinese and Indian nationals have faced retrogression and lengthy backlogs in the employment-based second, EB-2, and employment-based third, EB-3, categories for several years due to the volume of individuals from those countries seeking immigrant visas. Through employment in the U.S. traditionally, for most other nationalities, falling in the rest of world or all other chargeability areas category, retrogression has been less common in the EB-2 and EB-3 categories for positions requiring advanced degrees or most professional level positions. Beginning with the December 2022 Visa Bulletin, however, the EB-2 category became retrogressed worldwide, with a November 1, 2022, cutoff date imposed. More recently, in the May 2023 Visa Bulletin, the EB-3 category also retrogressed, with a June 1, 2022, cut-off date imposed, and the EB-2 category further retrogressed to a February 15, 2022, cut-off date. Around the same time, in the April 2023 Visa Bulletin, the EB-4 category significantly retrogressed worldwide due to changes in how this category is constituted going from a February 1, 2022, cut-off date in March, to a September 1, 2018, cut-off date in April. The physician, nurses and religious workers among those affected by visa delays. Each of these recent retrogressions is bound to significantly impact overall green card processing times for different groups of workers slash employees. Seeking to permanently immigrate to the U.S. based on employment or a job offer in the U.S. for instance. The EB-2 retrogression limits the flexibility for individuals whose work is in the national interests of the United States to seek a national interest waiver and simultaneously submit their adjustment of status slash green card application along with that petition, creating a delay in between the two steps. Similarly, physicians who have a commitment to work in a medically underserved area and pursue a physician national interest waiver on that basis would also have to wait to submit their adjustment of status applications delaying the ability to obtain work authorization for themselves or dependent family members that could come with the adjustment of status application being filed. In the EB-3 category, 
the retrogression could lengthen the already substantial processing timeline for hospitals and healthcare institutions in the United States to bring foreign nurses to the U.S. through the immigrant visa process, and given that temporary-slash-interim work visa options for nurses are limited, the retrogression could add more time before hospitals can have foreign nurses, whom they have recruited from abroad, on-site and able to work. In the EB-4 category, which covers many religious workers, the more than three-year retrogression from March to April could result in many religious workers maxing out of lawful status in the U.S. prior to being able to complete the green card process. Many religious workers are able to obtain an R1 visa to come to the U.S. on a temporary basis for religious work or to pursue a religious occupation slash vocation. However, they are limited to a maximum of five years in the U.S. in R1 visa status. With the current cutoff date for green card slash immigrant visa availability at September 1, 2018, it could be very difficult, if not impossible, for any religious workers who have not already filed their adjustment of status application prior to the retrogression, to maintain lawful status in the U.S. for the duration of the green card process. This could result in many religious workers being forced to leave the United States at the conclusion of their allowable time in R1 status. These regressions are not unprecedented, and they will likely continue to occur periodically if Congress does not increase the annual number of immigrant visas. Therefore, it is imperative that U.S. employers comprehend these dynamics and collaborate with seasoned Immigration Council to assess the effects of these delays on their workforce and develop strategies to mitigate the effects of retrogression as much as feasible. I hope you guys found this video extremely helpful. If you know anybody that could benefit from this information, definitely make sure to share this video with them. We are all about empowering you with knowledge. So the more people that can benefit from this video, the more people we want watching this video. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs icon. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and hit on the notification bell for more immigration updates. Bye!